Microjig. Work safer. Work smarter. I'm Ralph Bagnall, Technical Specialist for Microjig. And in this video, we're going to show you how to get great results from your gripper right out of the box. To get this level of accuracy, safety, and cleanliness in your cuts, you need three factors. You need your table saw set up properly with the rip fence exactly parallel to your blade. You need a good quality ripping blade, and you need the control that comes with the gripper. Now every table saw sets up just a little bit differently, so you want to make sure that you refer to your owner's manual, or you can click the link down below here to get more information on setting up table saws. The gripper is what we refer to as a 3D push block because we're going to control the stock in three dimensions. We're going to hold it down on the table, we're going to push it through the saw blade, but we're also going to prevent the, both pieces of stock from moving side to side so that they pass the blade exactly parallel, reducing the risk of kickback and giving you cleaner, more accurate cuts. Your body position is very important when using the table saw. You want to be to the left of the cutting area so that if anything does happen to kick back, it's not going to hit you. Now I like to put my stock on top of the table, put my gripper on top of the stock, and slide everything over until I know it's tight against the fence. The proper technique is to push the gripper forward, but also apply pressure to the right hand side so that you're always tight against the fence through the entire cut. The legs of the gripper form a tunnel that the blade travels through during the cut not only keeping my stock under control, but also acting as a moving blade guard, staying between my hand and the blade, through the cut, and until I can recover to the back. If something goes wrong, the damage is done here and not here. When setting up your cut, raise the blade until it will cut through the stock. The carbide tip of the blade should be exposed above the top of the material, but no more than that. The less blade that's exposed, the less damage it can do if something goes wrong. So now let's put that all together and make a cut. My table saw is properly set up according to the manufacturer's instructions. My parts on the table, gripper on top of the part, everything tight against the fence. And notice that both my rip and off fall parts went all the way through the blade and I was able to recover them back here behind the blade where I can safely retrieve my part that I cut without having to reach across the blade to pick it up after the fact. The gripper is completely compatible with all table saws of any size or brand and is compatible with riving knife equipped saws when the riving knife is set to the blade height. There are many situations in which you cannot use the blade guard that comes with your table saw thin rips, dado cuts, rabbiting. And in those situations, the gripper gives you the control and the safety you need to successfully make those cuts. The problem with the push stick that comes with your table saw is that you get one point of contact on the back corner of your stock up against the fence. When you push it toward the blade, it wants to move away from the fence. That's physics. The green grip material on the bottom of the gripper is holding your part from the top and across the 8 inch length of the gripper, keeping the entire piece parallel to the fence throughout the cut. And the gripper should never be used on stock that's narrower than the body of the gripper unless you have the balance support. The gripper also gives you the ability to utilize expensive stock right down to the very end. By employing the balance support to hold the gripper stable and bringing the center leg over so that it's going to catch my stock, the off fall, I can now rip this part down even further. First I want to check and make sure that my gripper is not going to contact the blade and now I can make my cut.
So typically with a single gripper, you can cut up to 16 inches long before you run out of rip fence to guide your gripper. Well, what happens if you need to cut a piece that's longer? Well, we can use the two grippers hand over hand, one feeding after the other to complete the cut. Let me show you how that works. Under normal operation, dust and chips that get on your gripper can be simply wiped off on your pants or a cloth. Pitch or wax that builds up on your gripper pads can be cleaned off by setting the gripper in a shallow pan with about an eighth of an inch of rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol, let it set for a minute, and then wipe it clean. Sometimes with hardwoods, they have stresses built into them from either growth or poor drying technique. And in that case, you'll see that because the kerf will either open or close behind your blade. When you see that, that's called reactive wood. At that point, you should stop because if it closes, it can catch the blade and kick back at you. That's what a riving knife is to prevent. But if it opens, it can actually push the wood away from the fence, which is also dangerous. But anytime I find wood being reactive, when I see that kerf opening or closing, I'm gonna stop the cut at that point, rough cut it on the bandsaw, and then bring it back to my table saw to finish the cut. This video will help you get great results from your gripper right out of the box. And the more you use it, the more you'll come to rely on it. Microjig. Work safer. Work smarter.